Happy Friday, everyone. I uh, hope that you all have enjoyed this week, kind of getting familiar with subjective and objective evaluations, getting kind of familiar with a little bit of the basis of where we're going to be coming from here for uh, kind of our, our, our foundation as it relates to uh, these various ethical components and various ethical theories kind of moving forward. Now, what I want to kind of discuss today and what we're going to find today, I think, is going to be a bit challenging. I know that I wrestle with it, and it, again, kind of builds from our previous conversations this week of subjective and objective evaluations. So, where the last video on Wednesday left off, and if you were in class, where we kind of discussed, is we have subjective and objective evaluations. We have subjective, you know, tastes, opinions, various biases, right? And we can think about a whole host of issues, right? And then we have objective evaluations that seem and ought to be more factual, unbiased, impartial, right? Rooted in reality, rooted in um, that which we can observe, that which can be tested, that which can be verified, that which has generalized agreement, right? All of those seemingly to be characterized and characteristics of objective evaluations. Well, now I want to take the next step here about... I want to take the next step here about how does this relate to morality, okay? And this is where, as you can see, uh, the title of moral relativism, come, moral relativism comes into play. And some of you might be familiar with moral relativism, at least putting those two words together, meaning like, you know, the idea that some things are correct in this culture and other things are correct in this culture, but there's really no way to kind of adjudicate between the two, okay? Well, moral relativism is, kind of, it is a very firm position, and it is a, a, I'm going to say, in my own subjective way, it is a very kind of pesky position, um, because it's difficult to totally refute, right? And this comes with the fact that, again, all of us, I would maintain, all of us think we are correct in what we believe, okay? All of us think we are correct in what we believe. If we didn't think we were correct, we wouldn't believe it. Okay? Another word here for correct would be right. We all think we are right in what we believe. Right? I am, I am maintaining the right positions as it relates to being a Republican. I am maintaining the right positions by being a Democrat. Okay? And we hold very firm in these beliefs. Right? They're the foundation of how we navigate through the world. And I th would maintain that most of us would probably like to think that we have some sort of objective force, some sort of objective justification even for these feelings, these thoughts, these beliefs about being right in our positions that we maintain. Right? It is objectively better to be a Republican, right? Or it's objectively better to be a Democrat, right? I'm sure that every single one of us, if you fall on a political spectrum in some way, right, are going to maintain maybe one of those two positions. Objectively, Donald Trump is a better candidate. Joe Biden, objectively, is a better candidate. Okay? Like, we hear this phrasing, we hear these kind of, you know, powerful statements in the world. We probably say them ourselves. Right? And we want to kind of like maintain some sort of like objectivism there. But given this whole weeks of discussion, are these claims objective or are they subjective? Right? And so we think about this a little bit deep, more deeply. And sure, we could point to certain things that, you know, uh, President Trump has done in office that would, you know, claim, yes, you know, qualified, and, you know, has made all of these kind of great strides. And then we would look at Joe Biden's record and we would say, look at all the things Joe Biden has accomplished over 40 years, right? And we could kind of compare those and we could maybe make a various assessment and say objectively, yes, one is more suited, better, is going to do the things that we desire. But yet, still, that whole conversation is laced in subjectivism, Right? And this is where it's really interesting, I think, in the political social sphere where so many different people from so many different angles, you know, throw facts here, 
facts there, facts here, facts there, right? Well, how verified are those facts? How many people believe those things, right? Because we talked about the nature of um, objective evaluations as a tendency for generalized agreement, right? And so this is where little fractions sometimes of conspiracy theories come up. If you have like one person that claims X that's contrary to the main populace, right? Where we should all believe this one thing. Well, that's just one person as opposed to, you know, a full weight of people factually agreeing to something else. So again, we have a lot of sifting to do here. Okay? And so I say all this by way of trying to like gear us up for where we're actually going as it relates to ethics, but I'm just trying to kind of uh, really put us in a position to kind of understand, I think, the difficulty in these conversations and the difficulty in really trying to adjudicate with these very subjective terms when we think we are objectively correct, okay? So I'm gonna pause here and then the next video we will speak more, I will speak more concretely as it relates to ethics in particular uh, and these kind of positions that again become contentious in nature, they become, um, they become, uh, they become sometimes contentious in nature, they become kind of, you know, very difficult in nature because often like when we're arguing about, let's say, immigration or we're arguing about abortion, any of these hot button issues, right? What we're doing is we're essentially kind of referencing subjective responses to a certain topic, right? Or you could bring in conversations as it relates to wear a mask or not to wear a mask. I'm not really totally interested in that debate at the moment, even though it seems very uh, pertinent because I think that Again, factually, there's been enough um, uh, research and, and verified generalized agreement to suggest that wearing a mask is helpful in slowing the spread of the coronavirus, right? Um, but maybe that's my own subjective viewing. I don't know, right? This is where these conversations come up, and these are how these conversations unfold. So anyway, kind of trying to place this dichotomy of subjective and objective in the term of kind of contemporary issues I think is really important. We're going to move on to um, more specific focus on ethics and morality in this next video.